Somebody's asking, Pat, why are you calling 2024 the year of chaos? Let me explain to you why. Because 2024 is known as the greatest election of all time, not because of America, but because 40 countries election are happening this year. Most ever amount of people voting in a single year. You know what the number is? 3.2 billion, that's 41% of the world. $44.2 trillion of GDP, that's 42% of the world. So what does this do? Here's what happens. Think about the chaotic place you've ever been. What causes chaos? DMV, chaotic. Hundreds of people there, right? Concert, chaotic. Leaving a football game, traffic, all parking lot, chaotic. New York City, chaotic. The Las Vegas Strip, New Year's Eve, chaotic. Airport, chaotic. What causes chaos? A lot of people people trying to get through something fast at the same time. This year, 41% of the world is trying to elect their, their leader. And you know what countries are? U.S., we're one of them. India, you want me to go through some of them for you? Pakistan, Indonesia, Venezuela, Mexico, Sudan, Taiwan, Tunisia, Austria, Belgium, U.K., South Africa, South Korea, European parliamentary election, and more, 25 more is happening this year. And the people of power don't like it when there's so many moving parts because they're losing control. The people of power don't like the fact that there's a lot of losing of power economically, politically, you know, all these, including spiritually, some of these religion and churches that are running around the world. So today we're going to make some predictions. Some of them are going to come true. Some of them are not going to come true. But a few of them are going to get you saying, really? You believe that's going to happen? Yes, we believe this is going to happen. So if you give value out of this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Look, when you have a year like 2024 where everything is predicated based on election, you have to be thinking about like the largest Christian nation in the world's elections going on this year, U.S., the largest two countries of Muslims in the world, elections going on this year, Indonesia and Pakistan, simultaneously at the same time. What's the first tipping point? Because, you know, when you look at media, we already know one prediction with elections that's going on. In May of 2021, 39% of Americans watch cable. Then it dropped July 2022 to 34.4%. Then January of 2023 went to 30%. Then July 29%. So mainstream media is going lower and lower and lower. First prediction, this will be the last election that mainstream media is going to have the majority influence over. This is it, mainstream media. Enjoy it. It's going to be the last one for you. Because 2028 election in America and worldwide, it ain't no longer going to be mainstream media. It's going to be a complete different story with podcasts, independent, all those guys that are doing what they're doing. You will be gone, mainstream. That's number one prediction. Enjoy this final ride of yours. Then guess what? Go retire your jersey and your teleprompter. And then afterwards, maybe even your earpiece, you got to hang it up because you got to figure out how to do this without a teleprompter there in 2028 and somebody telling you what to do because that's changing. Now let's talk about elections. You know what the pandemic did to us? It made many people lonely in America where they did not have somebody to talk to. Numbers came up saying 33% of Americans feel lonely. JP Morgan Chase just came out talking about 99% of Americans are doing worse today financially than they were three years ago. This may be tough times for some people. One of the worst things you can do is not talk to anybody. That's why today's sponsor is BetterHelp. What BetterHelp offers you is the opportunity to connect with over 30,000 licensed therapists who are trained to listen and give you helpful and unbiased advice. One of the great things about BetterHelp is sometimes if you want to go to an office to go meet with a therapist and talk to somebody because you got nobody in your life, you go to an office, you're sitting there, other people are looking at you. What if you run to a coworker family? It's a little bit embarrassing. BetterHelp, you simply do it on your phone. You talk to somebody, but if the therapist doesn't work out for you, they'll replace it with somebody else at no cost. And all you have to do to get started is fill out a questionnaire to help assess your specific needs, and you'll get matched with your therapist in most cases within 48 hours or less. Over 4 million people have used BetterHelp to live healthier and happier lives, and all you need to do is click on a link below or go to betterhelp.com forward slash value to get a 10% discount on your first month of therapy with a licensed professional specific to your needs. Think about what's going on. Why I call this a year of chaos. Year of chaos when people panic, right? Oh my God, I'm losing control. Why are they losing control? You know why? Tell me movies where two groups that were pinned against each other finally realize they're not each other's enemy. Behind closed door, somebody is pinning you against the other person. In a movie, Gladiator, remember that scene where, show your face, Gladiator? And he turns around shows his face, and then who unites? You have the emperor, you have the fans, Colosseum, and you have the gladiator, right? At first, they're together. All of a sudden, they team up and pin against him. They realize he's the manipulator and he's the enemy, and these guys unite, right? You, you remember that movie, in, same with Divergence, same with Hunger Games, where you realize somebody is pinning you against each other. 
You know what's going on to the world today? We're realizing the people of power who are afraid of losing their power. These organizations like the World Economic Forum or the World Health Organization or all these other political elitists, they're afraid because you and I are realizing we're not enemies. We're still looking at each other and saying, why am I hating you? Dude, I don't, I just disagree with you on six issues. I agree with you on 92 other issues. What the hell is going on? This year's is going to be unification. What weird, not everybody, of course not, because you can't get everybody, but we're going to unite this year. It's going to be weird. They're not going to like it. The manipulators are going to hate it, and we're gradually going to come here. So there's going to be an element of unification, and the people who you hated six years ago, people you voted for, seven years ago, people you voted for, are going to be like, and I guess it's not bad as I thought he was going to be. So this is why I think Vox says 55% chance, you know who's going to be the president this year in 2024? It's going to be Trump. That's what they're saying. And by the way, I kind of agree with them. I think Trump's going to win election this year if nothing crazy happens. And so that's the next prediction I'll make to you on who's going to be the president. I think Trump wins election. And if you believe Trump's going to be winning election, you know what that means? You think SMP is going to hit 6,000 before the end of the year. If you're part of the camp that thinks Trump's going to get elected, SMP is going to go to 6,000. End of the year if not Q1 of next year. Could even happen all this year. The other part that we have to be thinking about, one of the most important dates for the year is going to be August 19th through August 22nd. Why? That's the DNC convention. Republicans are going to have it July. Democrats are going to have it in August. When that happens in August, here's what many people are going to think is going to happen. Between now and August, they got about seven months, eight months. They have to be thinking about who's going to be their face in the starting lineup. They know they're not going to win with Biden because data shows any president's approval rate under 40% doesn't get reelected has never happened before. So if Democrats go into DNC with that guy being their face, what they're saying is we know we're going to lose. Okay. So they have seven, eight months behind closed doors. Guys like Obama's got to get involved and they got to start doing some negotiation to replace Biden and who that person they're going to replace with. There's a lot of people that see this as an opportunity. Some want Michelle. Obama's, I don't know, want Michelle. Hillary's dying to be that person. Democrats don't want Hillary. Newsom wants to be there. How is Kamala going to step down? Is Biden going to come out and apologize? Hell, is it going to get ugly? Nobody knows. But that convention that we're going to hear in August is going to dictate. It's going to be the tipping point of a lot of different things. Can you have a formidable person to go up against Trump? We don't know. We'll find out by then. So three things so far we've talked about. Number one, last election, the mainstream media is going to have majority of the influence and it's done with. Number two, Trump president, November 5th, US election. It's going to be crazy, but it's not even going to be close. And then next one that we have, August 19th through 22nd, the DNC convention, they have to introduce to us who their candidate is going to be. Those events, those second and third event is going to dictate whether SMP is going to go to 6,000 or SMP is going to go to 3,000, depending on who wins November 5th. So this next part is going to contradict what I told you on who's going to be the president because the next part is about a potential black swan event. What could definitely happen this year that's a little weird, all the movies, the timing and everything. You know, we had pandemic in 2020. You did not expect that to happen. There could very easily be a cyber attack, a power grid type of a crisis taking place in October of this year. Imagine if that happens accidentally. Oh, sorry. You know, October 18th, maybe it's on my birthday. Hey, it's a power grid shut down the power is down and it's China's fault and it's Russia's fault. Oops, elections came out. President such and such got 92 million votes, most ever. How did you count it? Well, we were counting all of it by hand, but guess what? Power is back up November 13th and everything's awesome. Isn't that great? Something crazy like that could also happen this year. Now, if you, we, the people, expose all of this gamesmanship up front so they know if it does happen that the people are naive about it, then that can be prevented. Again, if people unify, that can be prevented because all they're using is fear of one side to create the other side as the enemy, as delusional people, and they pin you against each other. They sell a massive crisis called the grid, and that's why you couldn't vote. And one side's going to say, what do you expect them to do? It's all China's fault. It's all Russia's fault. No, no, no. It's internal. Remember how I started this video? The people who have control and power don't want to give it up. That's why I call this year the year of chaos. Some of these guys are about to lose a lot of power. They don't like that. They're not accustomed to that. They can't stand that. They know 2024 is that year where they're going to have to give up that power control card. So they may be willing to go and try everything possible 
to not give up that power. Do not be surprised if that happens. Here's the other part that's kind of weird. You know, a lot of these companies with all this crisis that's going on economically, the companies haven't been squeezed yet to lay off a lot of people, right? Unemployment is still relatively around three and a half to 4%. Nothing crazy has happened. However, these corporate debt payments that they're paying, they're not lowering interest rates. And yes, they're gonna lower the rates this year, but if you look at this chart right here, look at the increase from 2023 to 2024 in US corporate debt maturity wall. And in 25, 26, this is not going away. So what are people gonna do with that? And what happens if earnings for companies drops off and all of a sudden you're hearing these constant earning calls. Well, they didn't hit their numbers. Well, they didn't hit their numbers. Well, the rates are going down. Yeah, but they didn't hit their numbers. What are the company going to do? They just laid off three more thousand people. They just laid off 2,000 more people. They just laid off 4,000 more people. Well, I thought it was going to market's going to go up. And then roughly 40% of companies are looking to replace human employees with AI technology. Google alone is preparing to lay off 30,000 employees in its ad sales unit for AI technology transition. And you ready for this next data? Ready? I mean, you, you may concern you a little bit. For 2024, 22% of companies planning layoffs may let go. You know what percentage? 30% or more of their employees. Let me say it again. 22% of companies, that's one in five, are planning on laying off more than 30%, that's one in three, of their employees in 2024. AI is here. If somebody gets elected that brings the level of confidence that the consumer and the voter has, they're going to be delusional. They're going to be like, at least somebody's there that's going to be leading the case, right? As long as that person's going to be there, I'm going to be okay. So if somewhere in August, September, this happened last time in 2016, in 2016, an article came out saying Wall Street and New York has said that Hillary Clinton's going to be the president 80% chance. That day, the market dropped nearly a thousand points because everybody was afraid. But flip it. Same article comes out and says there's an 82% chance that Trump is going to get elected president on November 5th. There could be a day of the market going like this, 1,100 points, 1,200 points, if some very influential name say something like that. So again, but this corporate debt payment and what these numbers, this is not like a thing that has to do with the economy. This has to do with something that we've been waiting for the season to come. It could come at any time in 2024. Again, we'll see. One thing to look out for in 2024. When it comes down to war in 2022, we had more casualties due to war than we had in the late 80s. Okay, we haven't had it for a long time since the 80s. And then 2023 beats 2022. So 2024, what's going to happen? Well, if we look at data, this is what I would tell us. What is common between 2021, 2022, and 2023? It's called a very weak leader and president in America. His name is Joseph Biden. Nice guy, but he sleeps, took 37% of his presidency he's taking vacation. What does that do? An opportunity for enemies to attack. So if that trend continues in 2024, and there's some other people that are sitting there saying, hey man, Taiwan's got an election coming up, and we're China, is this our opportunity to do something? Maybe, will they, will they not? I'm convinced there's a part of these people that are capitalizing that also want America to have a stronger leader to lower the temperature. These same big people that go like this, I think they want America to become stronger to lower the temperature around the reckless bullies worldwide that we're seeing in the Middle East and some other places. North Korea the other day said, if America does something, we have what it takes to attack America today. What? He said this just last week. What are you talking about? Little weird, little crazy. Unfortunately, we got one more year to go with a president in America that nobody fears and nobody respects in terms of war. That part is a little way too unpredictable to see what's going to happen. Somebody could say this is our last chance to do something with an enemy that we have way before a person like Trump gets reelected in America. Two last things to be thinking about. Number one, remember when banks were going out of business and America came up with this bank term funding program to prevent banks from going out of business? That's set to expire this March 2024 with a crazy year like this, knowing with commercial real estate, which is my second point, it's estimated $650 billion in property debt maturing in 2024. Those guys are going to want to get their payments at the high interest rate. A lot of these guys owning this commercial real estate property, they're not going to be able to make those payments. Payments. Banks who gave up this money, now rates are going so high, it's going to be nasty, which means, again, that program is going to continue way past the month of March. And I think this year in certain pockets, we're already experiencing commercial real estate in certain areas. Uh, property in LA, downtown LA, the Aon building, 10 years ago was sold for $268 million. Just closed this week, this last week, for $153 million. Think about it, you bought a building for $268 million and you sell it for $150 million. Commercial real estate is going to get destroyed in certain markets this year because rates are coming up 
and they don't have a choice but to make those payments. If you got value out of this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. And if you don't know what a zombie company is, I highly recommend you study what the hell is going on with all these zombie companies in America that rely to pay their salaries to survive purely on borrowing money. The numbers are staggering. If you've not seen it, click here to watch it. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye, bye-bye.